patalo patu America Samoa le ni tai a matamu fie le alofa maleana le le li patalo patu fo ia ila to wolo ma wo mai nei prokalama i lunga a o pena tu fai langi o la prokalama le nei wo ta ua o le fale la langa wa tu ua fa ta si la wo fisa o le American Samoa Visitors Bureau po le fisa lo nga fa matanga te tafa o mai to no ta tu wa tu nu i le nei la tai a fie fie la vale nga nga i wo ma fa ta si ai Mas ia tasi o tina, po a fafine fo ia latu nu. Wa lau i loa lana tautua i nga luenga fa atisi e le ngata o ia o stangata o le polo fesa o le itu lana fa fea i lana ta aleni. Ia o a o ina fo ili whanau, a o ia fo ia o se tasi tu ma alosi i le tamo whaie fa tu ma o pea nga luenga taulima e ia le siapo o tapa ma nga luenga fa pena. I'm here this morning with a good friend of mine, uh, Mrs. Regina Antoinette Meredith Fitiao. Good morning, Reggie. Good Reggie. morning. Thank How you are so you? Much. I'm doing well, <laughs> thank you. Well, uh, we're here at Leone. Yes. What, what, what do you call this land, this place? This is called Sina, this land. This Sina. Yeah, hello, my fatasia to my two fina, yeah, Reggie, in Ney Lafio Ana Leone. Olo Namaota Ney, I told my more my. Ya original artisi o le tele la vone nga luenga ya o nga luenga la vasa fa ye ya ya o le nei fo la proclama o le amatala no ai i nga luenga le ta u o le siapo tele fo ta sanga o lo ta mo fa ima ye le nei to fine e fa ma sali pe le nei nga luenga reggie we thank you for having us here at your home this is such a beautiful home thank you so much i appreciate it my first question when did you decide you're going to become an artist did oh you just goodness. wake up one morning and say i'm gonna paint <laughs> well no it didn't really start out that okay. way i think i was I, I realized that i was going to be an artist or i decided when i was a third grader mm -hmm. i had been in school and that day and at the time we're in hawaii because my father is in the navy okay. he's stationed at uh, camp smith and so i'm at school and we're we're studying uh social studies and the teacher has us do an art interaction mm -hmm. and i decide i'm going to draw a buffalo on this large to me it was a large <laughs> green piece of paper and after drawing it i thought that it was so good this it looked just like the you know what we were using as a, a source for this buffalo mm -hmm. i drew that i asked the teacher if she could pin it over the sink because we had a sink in our classroom mm -hmm. And that was the day I, I remember very distinctly wanting to become an artist after that day. So your buffalo was different from every buffalo in... <laughs> well, I don't know what the other students were doing, but I just know that mine was just... Uh, it, I just felt very confident that it was so well done that uh, I, I just felt that was my calling. And so from third grade, mm. I started to pursue it, not really seriously, but you know, I, my parents were very talented and so I'm surrounded by a lot of, being surrounded by a lot of talent. I think that was also an inspiration. Well, let's see for Ilalea ta ua o a onga i tonu fa atisi o lo iei tonu tato a onga. You know, Reg, we used to talk about the arts program, arts education. Now they started cutting funding. Yes, it's terrible. And it's 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 hard to you know, especially the fine arts. Yeah, I may say lava iei to inga mata upu fa pe nei lo fa pe nana. Yeah, Reg, what do you think? You know, you study with your research, uh, through your years of teaching. Yes. What do you see the difference between Western art and our own? Oh, there's a vast difference, but the, the one component I believe that really differentiates us from the Western arts is that we, our Samoan art is deeply integrated or, or uh, connected to our culture. Mm. It's very cultural and it has deep meaning and it's ancestral. And uh, a lot of the materials come right from our land. And, and by nurturing the land and maintaining those things, and then uh, learning how to do, for example, siapo, like I learned from Auntie Mary, 
uh, there's this wonderful integral part of Samoan art being uniquely different from Western arts. Western arts where it's a little more individual. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more about the uh, articulation of doing art for yourself, mm -hmm. per se. And I think that's really the main difference I see between the two. Yeah. And remember the title of this program is called Fale Lalanga. Ah, why yes. so no Uma Fio Anna. E la Fale Tina. Ah, e ole la e Famoni Fultano Anna Regi. Ah, ole 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 to inga Atisi Lepo and Alwena for Atisi Fay Samoa. Yeah, and Alu with Atasi. Everything is integrated. Ya Otina, La Lama Siafo, La Lama Fala, Yotama, Foyolo, Malulu, and carving. Ah, so you're not doing Alwena for Pena. Ole ole Terela, or is it Segala now Tato, Alwena for Atisi Tonu, America Samoa, Mangalwena for Atisi for Europa? And the other thing that Reggie mentioned is that most of the material is, is from our own natural environment. environment. That's correct. It's just, it's beautiful because you nurture the plants, you nurture the trees, you nurture the vow, and those things provide for you. Mm -hmm. And then when you make the art, it just has a deeper meaning to painting the mamanu, painting all this, the motifs yeah. that go there, that, that, the, that the, uh, the masters taught us how to do. It's really a beautiful combination of that. Awa o mamanu in, in English it's called motifs, yes. right? Let's talk about Aunt Mary Pritchard. Oh my goodness, okay. Ah, uh, ole neiti na la wi loa fo itono la tunu ua e meisel pasifika. Ia man la langi a toa le tina ya Mary Pritchard. Ia o ia fo isa te leeso na sao i le neina lue nga ole siapo. Ia, you remember her? Say something oh, about Aunt so. Mary. Auntie Mary, she was very strict in doing siapo. She had she wanted it to be done correctly. And so mm -hmm. she would correct you if things were not being done properly. Also, she had a love for anyone who wanted to learn how to make siapo. Mm -hmm. And she was a part of the Arts Council program. And at the time, it was uh, Pule Fasisina, yes. Uncle Brownie, mm -hmm. Tuyasa Sopo, who was, who was at the time, that yes, by Uncle Brownie. that was in charge there at the Arts Council at the time. And so she goes to every school teaching siapo to all the kids. And so, even though we would go to the house in Vaitongi, where she lived, mm -hmm. and do siapo with her there, we were also engaged in doing siapo in the classroom. At the time, I'm a junior and a senior in high school at Leone, and uh, she would come, and she went to every school, but those, those people who remember doing siapo with Auntie Mary, they learned a lot. She taught everything. And, you know, her teachings came from the women of Leone, uh, Colone Leoso and uh, Tuiuli. Mm -hmm. And so the women all got together and were really uh, very avid in, in making Siapo in, in those days during her time. Ole Silia Tulanga, if you have a Tawaina for Tatu Prokalama, Ole Ole Almaya Leo Maluena for Atisi, or we, we call it, we pass it through the next generation. Yes. As we remember our oral tradition, right? It's That's something right. that we pass down. From one generation to the next, yeah. I may say for the longer we na tau, we la basa fa for the next na Mary Pritchard, yeah. Osetina my Leone tele for the longer we na, yeah. Ole la wata tu wa ayai, bole ayla setina ya Mary. Alo ayla the afinene ya Reggie. Ah, Reggie, how do you see yourself continuing the legacy of Auntie Mary through your work with Siapo? Yes, thank you for the question. I, I believe that uh, part of the Part of the journey of perpetuating Siapo with the beginnings of Auntie Mary came from uh, Pule Fasisina at the time. Pule Fasisina Brownie Tuyasasopo was the director of the Samoan Pacific, Samoan and Pas Pacific Studies mm -hmm. at the college. And when I got on board at ASCC, uh, there was only Western courses being taught, Western mm -hmm. art courses. And there was a chance to go on a a conference in Australia, and um, Brownie asked if I would, if 
I would uh, present uh, art education in Samoa. So in, in researching, the conclusion mm -hmm. was there was no class for Samoan arts, wow. which led to the development of the indigenous arts forms class that we teach there, we still teach there. And uh, that began the, the, I guess the, that confirmed my continuation of what Auntie Mary was doing, where we wanted to bring the siapo and wood carving mm -hmm. and the knowledge of tatao and even the weaving. We yes. wanted our students yes. to know more about mm -hmm. their own Samoan cultural arts. And Mano, we brought it Mano into the level. classroom. And that was, uh, that was the beginning of, of that journey. And mm -hmm. so now, let's see, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm retired after 30, <laughs> 31 years at ASCC teaching the arts. <laughs> You but I, I've only a seasonal teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've, I've just retired from <laughs> from teaching full time. Mm -hmm. ah, but I still, you know, I still teach as an adjunct faculty. And Siapo is very important to me to mm -hmm. continue sharing. That. I'm, I'm glad now you mentioned that both Reggie and I are <laughs> retired yes. We're seasonal teachers from full time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> full time retired. Right, right. But uh, we also see the importance of students in our yes. in our line of work. It's a uwa yo fa na fa na ulaiti fa na talavo ile tamafaile fa atu maupe ina ne ina luwe na fa atisi or fa ingol siapo ah or oyai fo la ni na luwe na ah ale sunga fa ya onga ya regi sanga siya fo ya na ana tamiti ya onga reg. Yes, your students are all over the world. They are, and you have some of the the work that they're that you have there with you. Yes, because... Talk, talk about the importance of, of student work. Right, so part of the program at uh, America Samoa Community College was to engage students in doing the arts, mm -hmm. which definitely meant Samoan, the Samoan cultural arts, but it also wanted to fuse together the Western arts. We want, to, we want our young people always to be able to uh, work outside of our island and be able to understand some of the concepts that came from there. So drawing was one of those uh, courses that uh, that I offered mm -hmm. for so many years. And I just wanted to share a couple of um, portraits. This is a this is a self portrait by Kosa O, oh, who goes on to Cogswell College wow. and now has uh, earned his degree, a bachelor's degree in art. But he's in the art department and. Uh, to, to get students, mm -hmm. right, to get students to draw their, their themselves. It was really a, um, a real challenging yeah. uh, project. And then there's this one. This one, uh, this is Talanoa Lesatele, who with this, it's just a pencil drawing, and this is just a reproduction of it, but uh, the task is for students to draw their self-portrait and using only a pencil and some of the tools that you use with pencil. Mm. And so with this ebony pencil, wow. he draws this one and he wraps himself like he's in a fine mat. It's so beautiful. It's a fala, it's yes. a pattern. Ole fala, yeah. And we actually, that year, we, uh, I get in the mail a pamphlet and there's this competition at SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design. Mm. It's one of the top five schools in the United States. And we wow. enter this competition with this drawing and he earns a $13,000 scholarship to wow, go to that school. Wow, that's amazing. This, yes, and today, Talanoa, he is a full-on architect in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Wow. He's doing very well. Yes, very talented. And a lot of our Samoan kids are so naturally talented. Mm -hmm. You just need to give them an inspiration and guide them. To well, inspire not, them. Right, to inspire uh, them, exactly. If I've been uh, for eight years, let's say on a piano, uh, you yes. know, when I was doing music, or to find money, let's say I was doing a radio, or let's say I need a yo to make some more. Tell let's say I need a yo to make some more. Yeah, I mean, I'm here now if I on a little. You need good teachers <laughs> <laughs> to continue to inspire <laughs> them. While I for learning for ya on a if I've been now, no, to so so any. If I now day, yeah, it is a five for a moan in Alwena Fatia, or the man who is out for a name of Faya Oma. So Swani Yalo found out to take me to Moena. So Swani Elato, a why, or Yale or Maltale, Tato Fana. I'm an Almir Faya Oma. 
We need dedicated teachers, yes, motivated true. teachers, teachers who will sacrifice their uh, weekend to help the yes. students. Uh, we need teachers who guide them. Teachers who coach them. It's how we're telling our women that they are only to know that what to know. Reg, I mean, there's a handful of projects you were involved with. Oh my goodness! Yes. I saw, I saw the the national park tapa project you worked on. That's right. Ole suma for ya, Reggie. Ole tell yo on on our women that it's how it's to with commission. Be if I be now if I to know in a ele na tom tan na luena to no fetrale ya out to no for tato malo ya le aspa ya le mural tato i for you all tato faletelele o utulei that wildland mural oh yes that's right ya ole suma for na ya regi ya mana to meti ya onga me kolisi ya male suma la wi loya ryan wildland wildland yes wildland yes ha to mural matemo fear Reggie, let's mm. talk about your Smithsonian uh, Seattle Preservation Project. Oh, uh, my goodness, yes. That was really um, a real honor to go and represent American Samoa at the Smithsonian. Uh, Dr. Adrienne Kepler um, was a part of a project. That was 2013, and she was doing a top-up project where she had a collection from the exploring expedition of uh, Captain Wilkes. And we mm. engaged in working with other uh, tapa makers, and they were from the Cook Islands and also from Fiji, and then myself, where we were looking at this collection that he had brought in and got commissioned into the museum. And from there, 2014, Sua Willi Sone mm -hmm. and I, we, uh, we applied to a Recovering Voices grant, and we had hoped to uh, get accepted, to which we yeah. end up uh, yes. getting accepted. And that was about looking at more of a collection from the Smithsonian, from Samoa, of the tapas that were from, oh my goodness, 1825, or I'm sorry, 1838, that was one of the earliest tapas, and looking at a wide range to see the mamanu mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. siapo, if indeed there was continuity of the patterns, the pattern. and if it was related to to Tao. It was really quite a, a, um, an amazing, huh? amazing research. It was, and that inspiration came from us hearing Auntie Mary say to us one time that to Tao inspires Siapo, and that all mm. the arts, you know, they inspire uh, each other, but that to Tao also inspired Siapo. And we wanted to see whether there was this continuity, this continuation from the older Siapo to some of the more recent, mm -hmm. if that was true, and our findings that gets published in this large coffee table book. Oh, uh, this is heavy. Yes, it oh. is. It's like nine pounds, mm -hmm. but it actually does concur that there is a wonderful correlation between mm -hmm. the two. And, uh, and then for both of the textbooks here, or the, both of the coffee table books here, we also always want to include our students. So yeah. there are students in both of the, the write-ups and in the book. This one's by Rob Schaefer. Yeah, and, this uh, is the Schaefer book. Yes. O te loa wa wa la wi loa fuel tato atu nu ne tu si yo ba wa te loa lo te le tono la tu nu. Reg, you said yes. something about uh, you know, the continuity of of motifs in Samoan and also uh, with the siapo making. Yes. Yeah. Well, my mo my tato atu nu. O o le si vaya na lua ma pro kalama ile vaya so fo o le atato mai mo aina i siapo ese ese la we call this show and tell because <laughs> the teachers we show and tell <laughs> ya yeah, o le atato pro kalama na na ma ile vaya so fo o le as la suma ile suma fa ya o ma ma matato va ai fo ile i siapo ese ese po le meo fa tu ma wina pe ma manu po le si meo lo tato va ai atu va ile the sound of the song 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 you know, to have our work at the Smithsonian, that's, oh, that's what something. an honor, yes. It is indeed an honor. You know, the other thing, too, about the conservators, they, they taught us, uh, Sue Owilisone and I, they taught us how to uh, maintain mm -hmm. when when a siapo is in dire need yeah. of being uh, preserved they showed us how to stabilize these siapo and 
their care for our artifacts yes. is really admirable because if it hadn't been for them with their collection of some of mm -hmm. our things that came to them, we might not have uh, some of the work that goes way back into yeah. the 18 or the late 17 and 1800s. That's just amazing. It's, it's amazing to know that. And I think most of our, our artifacts and our, our work, it, they're in museums yes, all over the world. all over the world. It's true. Even our, you know, we're trying to maintain our museum mm -hmm. and we have a collection and we're hoping that things will get underway a little more. Yeah. Uh, but until we are able to stabilize the atmosphere inside the facility, mm -hmm. it's really hard to re repatriate some of yeah. the older tapas that could come back uh, to us, like say from the Smithsonian. Well, I think mantua poila tato ngalwe ngasamua, you know, o mene o siapo o ietonga. Yeah, ele ele va se maintain etu ilaro bo ina fala. Ah, that's that's true. That's our way of preserving. That's right. Put them under the the bed of mats. That's right. Yeah, I it's a foil le le mawa ayo la tama yo tato tua ah. And I, I think this is one way that we could educate our students not only to do art, but to maintain it. Yes, right? maintain it. Maintain it for the next generation. That's right. Reg, talk yes. about your uh, <laughs> national park. You know, and this is a, a, a good show to remind our people. Yes. the National Park. Uh, what was your involvement uh, with right. that we had project? A, we, we were offered a, um, a grant opportunity that would uh, define perpetuating cultural practices through mm -hmm. hands-on work and so the first year uh, what it what it did was it required that we have some master artists come in and when we went to do Siapo Mamanu which wow. is the freehand design mm -hmm. we have students there's probably five students that are enrolled and uh, because Sue Awilisone is also a student of Auntie Mary yes. he took Siapo making with her in uh, Fangaitua High School. Mm -hmm. He took the lead and together our group made a large eight foot by eight foot Siapo wow. Mamanu. It's probably the largest to date of that type, of that technique. And uh, now it's at the National Park. But they help to fund mm. our desires to showcase and to show the, the students how to file Siapo. Malola. Mm. Yeah, America Samoa. Yes. <laughs> of the arts program That's right. okay Reg, are yep. you ready <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Tata totua analese anua analese aboelela bala. Well, one of the lines is there, not the men, but the women do siapo. That's correct. What about today? <laughs> oh, they both do. We okay, both do now. Oh, <laughs> 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 